everyone. Welcome to this month's edition of North Central Outdoors. I'm your host, Nathan Karch. We've got a few different topics to cover today. Uh, first off, I want to talk to you a little bit about the spring 2020 fishing. So i uh, give you a brief report on that. It's, it's been okay. Um, it's not been fantastic. I think that's mainly due to uh, a, a lot of different, you know, weather changes. Um, and we experience this every spring. It's nothing out of the norm, but we get a lot of rain during the spring. And uh, those of you that, that fish Old Hickory or that whole waterway, whether it be Cordell Hole or Cheatham Lake, um, it's, it's all connected. Um, you have probably seen the fluctuation of the lake levels. And, uh, you know, every spring we get a, just a tremendous amount of, of rainfall. So you are going to experience clear waters one day and the very next day it's going to be high it's going to have debris everywhere and it's going to be extremely murky and it takes a while for uh, the cumberland river system to clear up so that being said it the fishing there has not been fantastic if, if you want to go to clear waters i would suggest like dale hollow or percy priest um, where they have you know rock embankments um, and shorelines not like the the muddy clay uh, shorelines of the Cumberland River system. So if it rains, it's, it's not going to be that affected by it. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of people are catching shellcracker, bluegill, um, crappie are still being caught. It's hit or miss on the large mouth and the small mouth. Uh, below Old Hickory, they are catching some walleye and sauger. And then on Percy Priest, early early in the morning uh, usually before sunrise or right at sunrise and then right at sunset on into the night they're they're doing well with the hybrids um, numerous amounts of catfish being caught uh, at pretty good depths um, and uh, that will go on for probably a, a little while but uh, usually when it warms up it, it'll kind of uh, not be as good but hopefully you know with uh, the warmer temps and maybe rainfall cutting out, maybe that'll help. You know, the largemouth and smallmouth, those some of those those game species and, and that kind of fishing. Um, on to our our next season, um, snagging season is coming up. And if if you don't know what snagging is, uh, it is basically a a non-conventional method of fishing where. A, the angler takes a, a large rod, and, and the best way I can describe it is a very, very big catfish rod. Or if you think about, you know, if you've ever fished out on the coast or surf fished, a big surf rod, uh, you're thinking like a super thick one. And uh, something is capable of, you know, taking a, a very, very large fish in current. Um, so they're using that, and they get this big, big treble hook and it's usually weighted. The, the hook itself may be weighted or they'll just have like a, a lead sinker on it and um, allows you to really cast it out there, get some leverage. And what they'll do is they're targeting fish below dams in, in the swift current. And they'll cast it out there and they'll let it sink for a second. And then as soon as it sinks, they just jerk on it like they're setting a hook and they'll reel the slack in and then they'll, they'll jerk it again. Um, and what they're trying to do is snag, essentially, um, any type of fish out there, specifically paddlefish and Asian carp is what a lot of people are after. But you'll, you'll hook into a, a common grass carp or a buffalo or even sometimes a gar. Um, and it's, it's very, very fun. The fish are very large, usually and you compound that with very swift waters, you're, you're on for the fight of your life. It's, it's very fun, but they're, they're trying to basically foul hook it, uh, whether it be in the tail, or the, the belly, the snout, the dorsal fin, whatever they can get a hook in, that they're, they're gonna do it. Um, that being said, there is a snagging season for paddlefish, and that's the main you know, target species that people are after. That goes from April 24th to May 31st. So uh, make sure that if you're snagging, it's within those days. And also be mindful that you have to stay 100 yards away from a dam. Um, so if you're a hunter and you have a handheld rangefinder, 
uh, just you get out there with your range finder, range it off 100 yards. I always tell people to give yourself a little bit of leeway in a buffer zone, maybe five or 10 yards, and, and you'll be good to go. Also, if you don't have a range finder, a good tool is Google Earth. Uh, they have a measuring tool on there to where you can basically drop a, a pin on the dam and then go to a specific landmark or um, a, another uh, pin and just drop it there to where you're 100 yards out. And the main reason we do that, one, from a conservation standpoint, uh, a lot of the fish tend to congregate up there in that 100 yard proximity and uh, it's more of a challenge out that outside of that 100 yard mark and also from a safety standpoint that is the main reason we do it is within that 100 yard mark you know the generators are are going off uh, the spillway is usually open when people try to snag and the waters are violent um, very very swift current and the closer you are to that dam, the more dangerous it gets. So we want you to stay uh, outside that 100 yard range. So be mindful of that. Um, if you do happen to catch uh, a paddlefish, um, that's awesome. It, it's hard to do, but you're allowed two per day um, and culling is prohibited. And what I mean by culling is basically, if you've already caught your two fish, you can't continue to fish and say you catch a, a bigger fish you can't replace that bigger fish that you just caught with a smaller fish in your batch that you've already caught. So once you, you've got two, uh, you're done for that day. Um, a lot of times you will accidentally catch a sturgeon. If you catch a sturgeon, that's fine, no big deal. Uh, if you wanna take a picture with it, that's, that's awesome, but it has to be returned to the water immediately. It's a protected species and you cannot keep it. So take a quick picture and, and release it. Um, if you catch an Asian carp, we ask you to please, please not return that to the waterway. Uh, you can just you can throw it up on the bank, but don't return it. You can take it home and eat it, uh, but just don't, don't return it. And a lot of people will catch those, uh, especially below Cheatham, um, and starting to be a lot below Old Hickory. So if you see one of those, um, and, and you see an angler catch one, just let him know as well. On to turkey. So turkey season um, is in full swing. Uh, again, the, the licensing for that is uh, you can have a sportsman or you can do your combination, which type 001 or a 009 or 11. Um, and that is archery or shotgun. So you, you can't use center fire or rim fire rifles. It's only shotgun or archery means only. Um, you, don't have a, you don't have to have a plug, so no magazine restrictions there, or shell restrictions, I, I should say. Um, they're not a migratory bird. Uh, if you are using a shotgun, make sure that your shot is no larger than number four shot. So most people use four, five, or six normally for turkeys. Um, and then again, no baiting. The, uh, the turkeys have been pretty good up until this point. I know where I hunt. A, a couple weeks ago, they were super vocal and people may be experiencing this in, in other counties, but uh, they've kind of shut down. I've been seeing a, a lot of the male birds pairing up and they're not interested in hens. And you see a lot of lone hens, um, which is kind of abnormal and I, I'd probably associate that to the the week of 80 degree temperatures that we saw. Um, it was just crazy for this time of year. And I think that's really affected it, but they could be acting totally normal in another uh, county. They do not gobble where I'm at. So I will call to them while they're on the roost and they're gobbling just fine. But as soon as they fly down, they're silent for the remainder of the day. I, I don't know why uh, that's, that's kind of abnormal. And I'm, I'm just speculating, but I think it could be a, a lot of predator activity in the area that they, they just don't want to be vocal. Um, they might still come to calls, but they're just going to be silent about it. So uh, just speculating there, but if you are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing, uh, it's not abnormal and you just could have a whole lot of predators in there. It could be something totally different. but. I want to let you know of a new system that we're utilizing this year in 2020. 
um, we're kind of on a, it's not really a trial run, it's, it's gone into effect, but there's a big grace period right now because we're trying to educate the public about it because uh, there's just not been a whole lot of information out there yet uh, due to this, this COVID pandemic and everything. But it is our new system called Tag Before You Drag. It's very similar to kind of the old, old system to where you put a physical tag on your big game animal. Um, but it's, it's more efficient and adapted with the time, so it's more electronic as well. What, the reason why we have that motto, tag before you drag, is before you leave the area where you killed your animal, it must be checked in. So you can do that electronically. Make sure to check it in and you will give, be given like a barcode and if you were stopped in the field by a game warden, uh, to check that, you can just pull up that barcode and you know that tells them that you've already checked that game bird in or deer, whatever. Um, if you don't have the means or cell phone service to check it in at that time, then you can actually put a physical tag on it. And the physical tags are available this year with your license purchase. So if you are a big game license holder, you'll notice that below your license printout that you received, you'll have about four big game tags. If you use all those up, uh, you can just go to your profile on our TWA app or website and you can print more tags off. So there, there's not a limit on that. Um, and then you will have to put a physical tag on that bird. If you don't have electronic service or you know, Wi-Fi, internet or anything like that, put that tag on the bird and then you will have until midnight that night to check it in as soon as you get home and, and when you do have service again. Um, does have to be checked in within that calendar day. So if you, you kill birds 6 a.m., you got till midnight, 6 p.m., got till midnight. So just be mindful of that. And again, there's a big grace period. We're trying to educate people on that, but we do expect people to be uh, using that by our 2020 deer season in the fall. Um, and I just want to give you a, a brief update, and, and we'll end on this note, the TWRA's response to COVID-19. Um, I know a lot of people were under the impression that we were shutting down our boat ramps, um, that you could not hunt, uh, you know, maybe spring turkey was canceled, and, and, and that's not, not it at all. We encourage everybody to get outdoors. Um, I know <laughs> for... A lot of people, the quarantine has been very, very painful. They're just itching to do anything because all of the entertainment is shut down. And really the only entertainment that you can have is, is getting outdoors. And we encourage that. Um, due to uh, Governor Bill Lee's uh, executive order, and I, I think that's 22 and 23, hunting, fishing, and boating are considered essential activities. And they will stay that way. Um, I can see boating, recreational boating, um, that, that might be amended at some point if, if people are not responsible about it. I know after that executive order passed, I was patrolling the lakes and I saw a lot of people rafted up. And if, if that keeps happening, then you know something may be amended about that and they may want us to enforce some stuff. Uh, but hunting and fishing definitely are essential because you can con consider that uh, sustenance and uh, people, you know, can provide meat and fish uh, for their family because if you've been to the, the supermarket, the, uh, the meat department is, is very scarce. It's, it's hard to find some hamburger or chicken or anything like that. So uh, when, when you can't get that in the supermarket, you, you might have to go out and, and get it for yourself uh, in nature. Um, so those are going to be essential activities and if we have a another wave that comes through they are definitely going to be essential activities um, and and we encourage it so let that be known uh, the only exceptions are state parks if they have a specific boat ramp or our public lands um, where people congregate a whole lot you know they may be shut down but as, as far as I can tell, uh, most of the, the Corps of Engineer boat ramps, they're not going to be shut down. Uh, people can still utilize those just like normal. So that is our response. Um, if I hear any changes, I'll, I'll definitely give you an update. Or um, if you 
hear anything and, and you know, want uh, an answer or have a, a specific question to anything that I've mentioned, uh, don't hesitate to contact me at nathan.karch at tn.gov. That's my email address. And uh, hopefully I can shed some light on, on some of that because these are just crazy, crazy times. Um, as you can see, I'm bald. Um, this is my Corona cut because all the haircut places are not open right now. So it's affecting everybody and uh, we just, we hope that you're safe, you know, practice social distancing. I know it's gonna be a while before things get back to normal. And hopefully we're, we're done with, with all this. Everything, you know, is, is back to normal here in a month or so. And we can just keep living the way that we used to. Uh, none of this quarantine stuff and uh, everybody has their jobs back. But again, please uh, get outdoors, you know, if, if you're going stir crazy in the house, but uh, be safe. And uh, if you need anything from the, the game wards here in Tennessee, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we, we would love to hear from you and we rely especially on you, the public, uh, to provide us with useful information. So uh, let us help you and uh, have a good time, enjoy the outdoors, and we'll see you next time.